So the next thing we, I really want to talk to you about is, uh, <clears throat> is the way in which it was done. Because even if we were to agree here that we should have left, um, then uh, the one thing that that we keep on hearing from Biden is that uh, there was no good way to do this if we had stayed there five more years, 10 more years, 20 more years. We just heard it on his live briefing that it was going to be the same conclusion. So the best way to rip the Band-Aid off is to rip the Band-Aid off, to rip it off as fast as you can, uh, because that's the, the least painful way to do this. So I want to play this for you, and then I'd like to hear you guys kind of respond to it. I'm curious to hear your reaction of this consequential speech by the American president didn't run from it. He owned it. He owned his decision. He owned the fact that, as he put it, the buck stops with him. I hope he gets to own their deaths, too. I, I don't I feel like I watched a different speech than the rest of you guys. I was appalled. There was such a profound, bold faced lie in that speech. The idea that we planned for every contingency. I have been personally trying to tell this administration since it took office. I've been trying to tell our government for years that this was coming. We sent them plan after plan on how to evacuate these people. Nobody listened to us. They didn't plan for the evacuation of our Afghan wartime allies. They're trying to conduct it now at the 11th hour. Okay, so that was Lieutenant Zeller. He was on uh, MSNBC with Brian Williams. Brian Williams was the, the first voice you heard there if you're listening to this. And then Zeller's was the one after that. Um, so, uh, what we heard there is that he had given some intel from his um, time over there in Afghanistan, but also working with other people there in Afghanistan that were working with soldiers, that they were providing intel to Biden. Now, the other layer, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load the deck here, but I want to talk about all of it. The other thing that we need to know is that back in 2010, Biden was quoted um, as saying to a U.S. diplomat, um, about the humanitarian concerns withdrawing from Afghanistan. And he said, F that, Nixon and Kissinger got away with it in Vietnam, we can get away with it too. Now, um, I haven't seen fact checks on that thing, but that is what was stated and I haven't heard anybody undermine what was um, said in that personal conversation with a US diplomat. So what do you guys think? Did we, uh, did we withdraw and do a good job of doing so? And was it always gonna be like that regardless of how it was done? I don't think anybody would say it's gone. There's a good job of this at no. all. What, no, what, what about you, Tom? No, go, you ahead. Like, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that we did it the correct way. I do like um, everything you guys are saying about the bases. I feel like with so much time down there, um, mm -hmm. we should have had some type of deployment situation in the state, and it is a bit hazardous. So we could have done like an eight month end deployment for individuals to go down there just to maintain our presence. Yeah. But I, I feel like there would have there's a better approach than how we did it, honestly. And if you know, as that quote you just read, I mean, that's fulfilled. Here we are, you know, but I, yeah, no, this is absolutely chaos. And, you know, I was listening to a report from some of our senators and congressmen who were saying we're getting briefed behind closed doors mm -hmm. and we're hearing this number of people that need to be evacuated, these situations. And then press secretary, the president, other groups are coming on TV and they're saying something different. So the, the whole thing's a mess it, and somebody's lying. <laughs> A hundred percent. But it, it's there. There, I don't feel like there's been a true plan. You mm. know, our allies, everyone has basically criticized this when we came out and said, hey, we're going to work on this timeline. And anytime you're working with the timeline with the Taliban, I mean, no, that's just a hard stop. You know, I think for anyone, I think as Americans, we're all probably shocked mm. that we're in this position now um, of dealing with a deadline that is essentially set by them. And there's no way there's been any organization to this. And this is administration that's found itself in chaos now and are having to make it work, which the reality is it's not. We yeah. just lost servicemen today because of it. And it's very possible that we're actually going to escalate the conflict even more. It was terrible. OK, so I'm going to give Biden a little bit of a pass here in, in this regard. The, the people that folks are really not talking about a lot right now that have completely mismanaged this. Uh, is the U.S. military. Mm. The U.S. military had an obligation to at least— yeah, Specifically who, though? Because well, I, I probably would agree with you on this. Any, well, whoever's in charge on the ground Boy, over Austin. there. And um, because we left back behind 600,000 weapons, seven, mm. 75,000 vehicles, and 200 aircraft, and a lot of intelligence uh, <laughs> devices, a lot of commu communication more, devices, we'll and um, lots of things. And it— it Biden, of course, it he, you know, he is not the uh, sharpest fellow. Uh, he's not 
cognitively all there. We can see that. Uh, he, he likely is he is just more of a figurehead. He's not very hands-on. He's a terrible president. But the folks that are supposed to implement this are really the ones that I think both sides of the aisle should be coming after, and I believe they eventually will. There should be resignations because it's just it, it just shows that it was so poorly bungled from an operation standpoint. Now, um, if, if Trump had been in charge, if he had won the election, if we had left, I doubt that there would have been as much bungling of getting folks out of there, and I doubt that they would have left as many things behind. However, as soon as you leave a country that you no longer occupy, toward the end, it's going to turn into a you-know-what show. Sure. And I don't care who you are. And everybody expects, like, we're going to leave, and it's going to be orderly. It's like a Sunday school classroom. No. No, it's a third-world country in turmoil, and there will be warfare and fighting, and it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like that no matter who left it, because once you leave, it's, it means there's a power vacuum there, and it will be filled. Do you feel like we would have left on Trump's timeline if he was reelected? I don't know. People all the time tell you things that they don't know about. Uh, I don't know that. Nobody knows that. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I do think that's worth saying because Biden's saying it all the time. We had to do it because of Trump. Mm -hmm. Though I do want to just mention this, even though it's a little bit off the subject. The man wrote 17 executive orders on day one of his presidency. Overturning things that Trump yeah. had done during his tenure. He had zero issue. Mm -hmm. And I, there were other people who came out and said this exact same thing. So this just is a read. He had zero issue with reneging on this contract. Now, however, what it would mean potentially was that it would mean more warfare with the Taliban. So he was in a position where he had to dis decide, are we going to abide by the terms of this contract um, and pull people out or are we going to not and uh, potentially risk warfare? But this is where I would push back and say, this is where we need a commander in chief that actually has got a backbone and maybe a couple of other body parts. Uh, because the one thing that I keep on hearing, because we've already talked about money, but let's talk about servicemen and women. The one thing that I keep on hearing from these people is we would stay there as long as it takes to get the job done or to make sure that this kind of stuff didn't happen. Jocko Willink was one of them. He was on Fox News the other night. Uh, Marcus Luttrell, the guy that was actually left um, there in Afghanistan uh, in that movie Lone Survivor. I'd heard, heard him talking about this too, that... Um, that they would take whatever risk was necessary to be there and to make sure that they were protecting people throughout the, the remainder of this withdrawal. Um, so uh, so but back to the point is that uh, Biden keeps on repeating this thing. I was left with this thing. I had to pick up the pieces um, of, of Trump's horrible deal. Blame it on the previous guy. I, I, just, I just wish that I could be in business in the highest office of the land and blame everybody else when I absolutely screw the pooch yeah. on stuff. But I mean, maybe that's politics. It's, I find it strange. I, I wish I would like to see Trump blame everything on Obama. <laughs> I couldn't imagine a slap. I mean, I guess they all do to some extent, right? But, but I mean, this is this is ridiculous. That, mm. as as in my opinion, in a list of horrible ways, let's say there was no good way. In a list of horrible ways, we probably chose about the worst way that you possibly could to withdraw everybody. Well, one last thing on this: was it a good? Did we do a good job withdrawing? It is the United States federal government. And, do they do anything good? And, yeah. and, and, right. and they're not even here. Yeah. They're across the globe. Mm. I mean, they can't run the DMV. The Senate <laughs> cafeteria loses money. The post office is always in debt while UPS and FedEx is always printing money. The fact that they wasted right. a bunch of money and screwed something up, people are like, I can't believe this happened. Well, <laughs> you should be saying, well, that's about when – when I saw all this, I, maybe that's one reason I haven't been ruffled about it. Sure, and my wife's yeah. very ruffled, and a lot of people are very ruffled about it. And the loss of life is is very uh, disconcerting, and that's terrible. But to watch the U.S. government and its all its largesse fail at something yeah. is not surprising. Is it is not it, – this is not some small entrepreneurial organization yeah. – that, that is Johnny on the spot, and they've got a track record of excellence in everything they touch. They really have a track record of wasting money, not achieving objectives. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Huberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.